Welcome everyone uh, to our Profit Max and Dropiness Night and Dropiness Network uh, bridging session. Tonight we have uh, our special guest, Dr. Sri Joseph Lee, who is a seasoned investor in cryptocurrency. And the reason why we are, we are talking to him is because as entrepreneurs, I noticed that uh, the businesses who are still doing okay or surviving and continue to survive are those businesses that have got good reserves, cash reserves or property reserves, whatever reserves, but they have strong reserves. And this didn't happen overnight, neither did it happen by accident. Reserves were built over the years and also with a lot of skillful investment. So some, some entrepreneurs prefer to invest in things like property or hard assets or gold. Others prefer liquid assets like stocks and shares. And over the last 10 years, we have something called cryptocurrency. And it's become, and cryptocurrency has become mainstream, no? So initially when it started, there was so much controversy. In fact, now there's still controversy. So the old time investors like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, all these guys, they're still saying, hey, what is this crypto? No, Bitcoin has got no intrinsic value. How can we invest, no? But then you got other guys like Ray Dalio, Kathy Wood, and, and even Elon Musk, right? Uh, promoting it and saying this is here to stay. And they're saying even if even if countries uh, start to regulate, you no, know, like China start to regulate, they cannot take it away. All right. But but to be good investors, we need to understand about the investing. We need to understand about the crypto world before we can become good investors. So tonight, like I said, we're very privileged to have with us uh, Dr. Joseph. And maybe before we start, I can ask him to uh, introduce himself and tell us a bit about himself and the Golem Group and how he, how he got into this. So Dr. Joseph, you could do us the pleasure of introducing yourself. Hi, right, thanks, thanks. Uh, thanks guys for you know, inviting me. Uh, first of all, you know, I'm in the car because my house internet access somehow rather today just gone cuckoo. <laughs> so I'm doing it in a car uh, outside right now. Uh, um, uh, uh, for myself, you know, I've, um, as mentioned, I'm, I'm basically from the fintech uh, um, sector. Uh, many, many years back, I was in banking uh, in the, you know, all the banks, you have this uh, forex and trading department division where they trade all the different different currencies. I originate from there, uh, and then moved into the the back end settlements between the forex uh, in in banking sectors and also uh, in the international uh, payments where the funds move around. Uh, that was my uh, banking days, and after that, uh, um, I focused very much uh, on to algorithmic trading, uh, which, you know, once you have all this uh, trading within the banks, you have a lot of this uh, private fund house and the hedge funds um, that actually does all this um, trading. So what I do uh, back then was that um, the technology kicks in and we say that, hey, instead of having human trading it, uh, what, what happens if we have technology trading? Because you have 24 hours kind of trades and, and you know, um, robots, they don't, a system, they don't have a secret breaks. They don't have uh, failed marriages. They don't have weekends <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> they don't have emotions, basically. No, they don't take secret breaks and just work. So, um, um, we, um was part of a team that uh, designed uh, this kind of algorithmic tradings for the for the banks, both uh for FX and also for the uh, equities, which is the stock market back then. Uh, then uh, subsequently, I was uh, um. Uh, roped in into into crypto yeah uh, but uh, that comes a bit later on uh, and on top of that uh, I've, I've been in crypto since I think 2016 ish around there uh, till now uh, I went through you know the 201718 boom and then the crash then you have the three years crypto winter and now you have the 2020 and 2021 uh, uh, second rally which is crazily you know hot uh, uh, then so um, I've been through the ups and downs the early days when uh, it was designed uh, on cryptos uh, and also the crypto winter where everybody died um, well most <laughs> of the people died and then it comes back alive now uh, in the last maybe about one year plus you know uh, so that was it and um, on top of that I'm also in uh, Golem Golem group uh, Malaysia and the Golem Group Malaysia, we have multiple arms. Now, how, how I started Golem Group uh, Malaysia is actually from crypto. 
um, you can say that the entire Golem Group is powered by crypto uh, because um, all the assets, all the funds that was used to build Golem Group actually comes from profit from crypto. <laughs> okay, so from crypto the base, uh, I I um, sort of like diversify back onto traditional businesses. So some of the people will do it the other way around. They made money in traditional business, then they want to diversify into crypto. But for me, uh, it's the other way around because I made my first bucket of gold from crypto. And from there, I diversify back to traditional business. So that's my reverse path. So under the Crypto Group, uh, Golem Group Malaysia, uh, I have a uh, uh, Golem Hata, which is a properties. Uh, what we do is we deal in bulk purchases. We, we deal with the developers, we buy in bulk, then we break bulk it to the smaller buyers. Uh, because we get a large discounts. Uh, we have, uh, I also have a Golem Moto. Uh, it's a used car dealership. Uh, then uh, I have a Golem Tourism uh, Tours. Uh, Golem Tours is, well, Tours, we have uh, three licenses, inbound, outbound, and ticketing licenses. I have uh, a migration services, which is the Golem MM2H. That's my Malaysia, my second home. Um, and then um, I there is a Fin. Uh, that's an investment hub. I call it the innovation hub, which is Golem Lab. Golem Lab is a uh, is a unit whereby we do early stage investment. We uh, we we look at all the different different business models uh, where we can consider to invest into, and we spring it up. And from uh, the Golem Lab, uh, we spring off FMB uh, units like Fakasa uh, Food and Beverages, uh, and also we have um, uh, Google. Uh, sorry, uh, Google. Dot care, which is an online pharmacy. So it's the first online pharmacies where, where we can actually deal with uh, prescription drugs. Uh, we can sell prescription drugs. We have uh, online tele uh, medicine where you can actually see a doctor online. So uh, Kubat.care is a pure online uh, e-commerce uh, pharmacy, so, so to speak. Yeah. And there's a very big uh, uh, one arm of it that comes out from there. Plus uh, some other stuff that uh, I have uh, on the overall Golem group. Yeah. But uh, the entire thing is actually powered by uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Okay, that's very interesting. So you yours is a bit of a reverse story. Huh? So it wasn't... Yes. <laughs> it wasn't getting yeah, crypto. Yeah. Yours was getting the crypto first, making a pile of money from crypto and then getting into business from there. Uh, that's actually because of my earlier days thought of being a diversification, you know, no matter, uh, there's a saying that says no good days will last forever, no bad days will last forever. So mm -hmm. no matter how bad the day is, it will end. No matter how good the day is, it, it will also end. So that was passed down to me. So when you're in good times, don't just, you know, uh, push your way and push your luck all the way out. Oh, diversify. Whatever you make, you diversify. Yeah, very good advice. Excellent. Okay, so maybe you could share with us, Joseph, one or two of the biggest challenges you face in your entrepreneur journey or in your investing journey. Uh, in terms of uh, which area again? Sorry, come again. One or two of the biggest challenges you face, either in your investing journey or in your entrepreneur journey. And how okay, you in terms of... Uh, Entrepreneur or in crypto? Well, both, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> okay, it's, it's quite different because the way you manage uh, crypto assets and the way you manage traditional business is very, very different. Uh, mm -hmm. If I were to talk about the crypto, I would guess that um, in the early stage, I didn't recognize it big enough that it says that uh, it will become as big as what it is today. Okay, I mm -hmm. thought that it would, be, it would be good, it would be big, but not this big. So what I failed to do uh, was I failed to silang, <laughs> so to <Yeah>. speak. <laughs> uh, yeah, people always say, you know, uh, well, how many Bitcoins do you have? I, I always say not enough, I should have bought more. <laughs> yeah, so that's one of it. Like, um, and also, you know, uh, in, in crypto sense is that a lot of time uh, when, I think it, it's the same in most investment. When the investment value goes up, we tend to always uh, uh, have this tendency to sell off. You know, um, mm. after you sell it off and then it goes up further and it sell off, go up further and then, ah, crap, then you decide to buy it back and then, boom, it goes back down. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a very typical uh, uh, trading kind of mind mindset that people mix uh, in terms of the mistake. So I, I guess uh, from the angle, you know, chasing the trend is, has always been uh, one of the biggest problems uh, most people would have. 
uh, when it comes to trading. Both, it doesn't matter whether it is a stock market or it's a crypto or, you know, a bond or whatever that you deal in is the same thing. But when it comes, if you're talking about traditional businesses, it's always been um, trying uh, investment, yeah. Uh, I'm th specifically talking about VCs kind of stuff. Uh, has always been investing in projects. So uh, one of the issue with uh, investment in companies is that you have a lot of these new people who has a lot of ideas. They come out with, oh, I've got this idea, I've got that idea. Uh, but unfortunately, they are not people who have done it before, right? So you're investing in the person on his ideal. So that actually becomes a problem because most of the time they don't have the experience to execute it. What I learned later on in, in investing companies is that we focus very much on to investing people as in we, are in, we, we have this team called disgruntled employees. So, mm. <laughs> so a disgruntled employee uh, team is basically, if you, you look at a, an existing business uh, where it is very successful, and you have one key employee inside there. And somehow that the key employee decided, you know, and fight with the big boss. And then they decided to say, you know, I, I do not want to deal with the big boss, you know, I want to spin out and deal with my own company. Now, um, these are the best people to invest in because they know their business inside out and you just have to throw them money and they know how to set up the whole thing by themselves. Yeah. They are already key men, okay? Yeah. Uh, where else, you know, when you try to invest in a company whereby you have these people, um, I have an idea. I have an idea to do this, I have an idea to do that, but they have never done it before. Okay, They think that they have done it before. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I have um, uh, invested in and uh, start up many, many different types of companies before. And I can tell you that all businesses has their own problem uh, that nobody else understands. There's always something behind you know, that nobody else understands. Uh, even like clothing. Clothing, you look at it, wow, people say, hey, clothing, you make a 300% uh, uh, kind of margin. Wow, it's fantastic. Sure, make money one. But actually, it's not you. Uh, there's uh, you have a lot of dead stock. So the key point about clothing businesses is not about uh, uh, whether you know how much you can sell. It's about how whether you have the ability to get rid of dead stock. You know, uh, and and these these are all the small little little things that a lot of people who is outside the industry doesn't know. So when it comes to even like uh, pharmaceuticals, there are very specific problems that people do not know unless you're actually in there. Mm. And to look for people whom uh. Uh, you know, not from, from an outside industry trying to start a business in there, it, it, the, the risk of failing is actually very, very high. So that's on, on investing in companies. Uh, yeah, I hope that answers your questions. <laughs> Excellent. So, so basically what you're saying is there are intricacies and trade, I guess you can call it tricks of the trade in every industry that are peculiar, right? Yes. And if, yes. You, don't, if you don't understand those peculiarities, those tricks of the trade, you could end up with a lot of problems, though. Yes, definitely. You will you will end up with a lot of losses. Yeah, yeah. You, you from outside, it looks beautiful, but actually it's not. Yeah. You know? uh, one example, another example, is, let's say, for example, uh, restaurants or mm. even boutique hotels. A lot of people say, you know, why are these boutique hotels and these restaurants that has nobody going in? They're still making a lot of money. But do you have to understand that uh, a number of them, not say all of them, but a number of them actually using it to do money laundering? Hmm right and if you're into this past coaches is the same thing you know uh they are operating at the loss but they are still making money is a, a lot of them actually using it for money laundering they will say that my bus is full load when the bus is is like zero so if you're going in thinking that you want to do a bus business you'll be in a lot of trouble because you didn't know that actually the money is coming from a different place yes the income yeah. is somewhere else right correct 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 yeah. so uh, there's a lot of examples you know mcdonald's McDonald's is the world's, you think that the burgers, but the world's largest uh, toy makers is, uh, toy retailers is McDonald's. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, you yeah, have a home as well. property, yeah, property which is powered by French fries. So there's uh, all <laughs> these things that outside people won't understand unless you're in the business. So, you know, trying to, to start something without people within, from the industry itself is, is extremely risky. Okay, great, great insight there. Uh, <laughs> let's start to zoom in a bit onto crypto. So, you know, recently you got uh, what I call, what I guess you can call a pullback or a crash. Of course, this few days it's gone up again. But, you know, I guess I guess Bitcoin and all the other coins kind of hit a peak around April or May. And then you got China clamping down on the mining, in the, what do you call the Bitcoin mining. You got Janet Yellen making all kinds of statements on regulation. 
So I guess people got jittery and the prices started to pull back again. Uh, but the last few days seem to have picked up. So it's kind of like a yo-yo. No? So I guess, I guess, would you agree that uh, crypto investing is pretty risky? Or do you think, uh, you know, it's going to be more upside and nothing to worry about in the long term? And well, what's, your, what's your take on that? I would say that uh, it's fintech, okay? Uh, and it's a new technology company. In all new industries, they never start up as perfect. You have always have good times, bad things, you know, it's, it's not perfect. And what I'm trying to say is that it's an evolving uh, uh, industry. Um, it's, it's the same in all technology company. You know, you, have, you, you will never get a specific company that started off as a perfect company. They are all uh, uh, evolving. So when we started off crypto, it is in the early stage. It's not like, okay, now we have the internet. Internet started off in two, year two, 1998 when, you know, everybody was still saying that it's a, it's a lousy thing. So in terms of crypto, it is still evolving. Uh, even like, for example, you're talking about the mining, you know, uh, China is actually kicking them out. It's also mining and the industry itself is evolving and improving uh, to use uh, green energy right now instead of just purely dirty energy. Uh, you have a lot of, uh, uh, any kind of industry that is new, you, you have no regulated framework. It's, it's true, okay? So regulation is always slow and uh, the regulations will adapt when the mass market adapts it, okay? Um, let's uh, get uh, an example, let's say Grab Taxi. Last time Grab Taxi is the same thing. When the Grab came in, it kicks off all the taxi company and then you have a lot of regulatory issues, you know, saying that, hey, you don't have license to do this, you don't have license to do that. But eventually when the market gets so big and everybody adopts it, adapts it, okay? The regulation have to kick in and change, okay? You have Airbnb, it's the same thing. Okay, so um, um, you have individuals becoming hosts, hotel, uh, hotel hosts, they, they are just a platform. So all these different, different industries went through the same process of regulatory scrutiny. Uh, uh, and when it's new, there is always a regulatory uh, gap. Okay, and mm -hmm. this is also happening in cryptocurrency. Uh, it is evolving and there is a very big gap in how they manage and how they actually do it. Um, and it's evolving very, very quickly. So you have cryptocurrency when uh, 2017, okay? You always say, what is cryptocurrency? People say, hey, it's, it's money 2.0. So boom, you have a money 2.0 and, and then they started to apply money kind of regulation onto it. But it is not exactly money, it's, it's technology and money, okay? And now you have uh, the, the crypto 2020 to 21 kind of boom. Okay, a new thing came out, we call DeFi, decentralized finance. Okay, so what essentially decentralized finance is is uh, is banking 2.0, and at the same time they are trying to apply the existing banking kind of regulatory uh, framework onto the industry, which doesn't fit because it's so new, all right, and it's always evolving, and the, the regulation is just trying. Well, it's not a bad thing, you know, uh, regulation is a good thing because they are trying to protect the mass, but because it's so new and the regulation is always like it, it, it's too slow. Mm. So if you look at it on the whole mm -hmm. thing. The uh, industry itself is new and there is a future. You think about TV back then. You know, people say, what the heck? Who, the, who will buy a box and look at it for the whole day? You know, you have your trees outside, you have fields outside, your rivers outside. You go outside, who will look at a box? You know, whole day, spend the whole day there. They say it's, it's, it's going to die. You know? And then you have personal computing. It's the same thing. Then you have the internet. You know, back then, I say, why would anybody need internet you know we have a telephone we have this you know you, you don't need it it's too fast but eventually people you evolve and uh, uh it will it will people will use it for something else so cryptocurrency is the same thing it started off as just a hobby right now after that they build up they use it for payment they use it for transactions they use it for store of value uh then subsequently now they're using it for decentralized finance remittances there's so many things uh even loans and lendings and borrowings are all inside there building up by itself so eventually, the techno, uh, the plat, uh, the the industry will grow. So I, I personally have a very very long horizon on it, and I think that uh, even uh, as of today, it's still a very very big uh, uh, from where it will it, it will reach the peak. So it's still very early stage. And to be honest, you know, today I always say that you go out. What mm -hmm. business do you have to do? All business died. Not just not just Malaysia. You're talking about the world. Okay, you do anything, there's basically no business really, <laughs> all lockdown, uh, uh, except for food, you know. So the only thing you can do is go back home, sit down there and you're going stock market. Stock market also die. 
you know, the, the only hope we have is actually crypto, where you can actually potentially make some money. May, may as well just put some money in there. And I'm not talking about all your money in Sailang. Like just put in a little bit and see how it goes and learn from there. Mm. So uh, that's that's my take on crypto. I don't think it, is going, it has ended. I don't think it has even reached um, its teenhood. I think there's a very long way from where we are. Uh, and I am very, very biased uh, towards it. I'm very uh, pro and, and I'm supportive of the industry. Okay. So so when you talk about long-term perspective, Joseph, are you talking about three years, five years, or much longer? Uh, uh, at least five years. Now, um, now hang on a second. Yeah, I, I need to qualify myself. I am very, very uh, uh, pro this industry, but it may not be Bitcoin per se. Okay, because you have to understand that this technology is just too fast, evolved too fast. Maybe today is Bitcoin. Three years later, maybe a new technology comes in, but it is also cryptocurrency that will replace it. So I'm saying that the digital asset space itself will be there, but it may not be Bitcoin, it may not be Ethereum, it could be something else. It will change. Okay. At, at the moment, a lot of people are saying Ethereum is a good good uh, second one. Maybe even will overtake crypt, uh, Bitcoin. <clears throat> simply because the use cases are much broader. What, what's your view on Ethereum? It, Ethereum, first of all, we have to understand what Ethereum is. Ethereum is uh, uh, what you call a smart Bitcoin. Okay, it's, it's where, uh, uh, okay, Bitcoin is store of value. It's like gold, you know? uh, but Ethereum is where the innovation is. It's where people use it to develop software, to develop all these DeFi and things. Mm. Uh, that is the place where you have smart money. Just imagine you have, uh, I'm not sure, you know, how, how, uh, uh, you know, how much the, the group knows about uh, crypto. So you have, let's say you have a Bitcoin, it's like one, one dollar note, okay, one piece, one dollar, um, and you can spend it blindly. So that's Bitcoin, right? But if you're talking about uh, Ethereum, you imagine that you have one piece of a, uh, a ringgit, and in there you have a smart chip. So you can actually design and say that, put a rule and say that this $1 bill, you can only use it to buy food or buy uh, groceries or buy, uh, um, I don't know, uh, uh, stationery. Uh, a very good example is last time, you know, uh, we asked our parents, you know, uh, give me five bucks. And then the parents would say, here's five bucks, but use it only to buy books or eat. But we go take the five bucks, we go, okay, <laughs> go <to> okay. <laughs> back then, yeah. So you, you can't control it. You know? So five bucks is five bucks. You can use it any way you want. But Ethereum is, is such a way that you can actually, the, the, let's say the parents will say, okay, this is a five bucks. I write a quote in there and say that this five bucks, you can only spend it on food or uh, stationaries. So if I take this five bucks to go to the arcade machine and slot it in, it will, it will get kicked out. So it's not authorized. So uh, you, you have a lot of these rules uh, that you can set onto that uh, Ethereum. Uh, that makes it a lot smarter. Ah. And, yeah. So and because mm. of that, yeah, that's where the innovation is. And uh, especially with EIP, the next coming uh, London fork, uh, hard fork, which is uh, EIP one five five nine coming in on fourth uh, of uh, August. Um, there is a potential that uh, um, uh, to turn Ethereum into what we call a deflationary kind of uh, uh, tokens, where the the quantity of ether being uh, being issued out is going to reduce. And therefore, the value, you know, potentially can jump very high. Mm. So, uh, I myself uh, is uh, heavily into Ethereum. Uh, I technically have more Ethereum than I do have Bitcoin. Ah, yeah. Okay, you take that as a tip. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't take it as an any investment <laughs> advice. It's all chit chit Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Okay, <clears throat> um, wanted to ask you, Joseph. Where do you, how, how do you follow? Because there's so much news and so much happening on crypto, you know. Mm. You've got uh, Telegram groups, you've got uh, coin, coin desk, and you've got so many things on the internet, you no know, people having all kinds of YouTube channels claiming to be experts. How, how, do, you, how do you get your information and who are your reliable sources of, of information? How do you track? Okay, for some new people who wants to uh, learn about it or get some basic information, there, there are a lot, you know, uh, but you know that uh, Coin, Coindesk, uh, Tele, Cointelegraph, these are the large uh, news uh, uh, publisher, all right? Uh, so you can actually subscribe to them. Um, you can, these days with browsers, 
PC browser is actually very useful. You can actually allow them to send notification every time whenever there's a new article, it just pops out on your, on your screen. So that's one. Uh, another useful one is if you go to this place called uh, Coin Market Cap, yeah, on your mobile app. Okay, on the mobile app, if you load up, uh, install the Coin Market Cap, one of the tab is actually the first tab is actually where you have news. All right. So what they do is that they collate all the different news from all the different sources and show it there for you. So that is a very interesting one-stop center where uh, where users can actually gain breaking news. Breaking news, as in you know, it could be anything from. Uh, one hour you know, to a few days kind of thing, but it's a very good place to start. Okay. Would that would there be any personalities that you personally follow and any guys that, I, I know when we spoke last week and I asked you whether you're attending the conference, you say no time, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I, I, know, I know there's a lot of these uh, people who follow uh, uh, so-called, what you call a uh, K, what? A K. QLs. Yeah, KLLs, yeah. Uh, I personally, I do not believe in, in them because uh, KLLs are all, they have their own agendas. You know, okay. They, first thing is that they don't promote something for free. They must have a personal vested interest into it. Uh, so I would believe in my own personal interest rather than following them. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't really follow. I, in fact, actually, I hate uh, Elon Musk commenting and, and you know, <laughs> manipulating the market. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So you kind of um, make your own independent judgment based on your knowledge, your experience, and what you see, yeah? Yes. Uh, no, uh, there is a exception there. I do tap into uh, people like Yellen, you know, uh, and then there's a Gresner guy. Uh, because these are regulatory people, and mm. the, in the entire crypto space, the, most, the biggest risk isn't about people selling. The biggest risk is still today is regulatory risk. And um and in order for us to understand the regulatory risk, we need to be tapped onto what this guy says. So whenever there uh, uh Yellen, I call him Andy Yellen, <laughs> whenever she says something about yeah. crypto, you know, I, I want to know about it. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Yeah. So so you think the biggest enemy for crypto is actually government regulations, huh? Yes, it is. Okay, okay. They can't block it, you know, they cannot block it, they cannot change anything, they cannot even uh, stop it from happening because we have gone through a period whereby it's beyond blocking, right? Mm. Uh, once people it's so big, it's got its own critical mass already, la. Right, right, right. You you can't block it anymore. You you look at US many years two zero one seven two zero one six. They have not tried to do that. They keep on trying to block it. They try to close it. After that, they give up. You know, now the next one that's coming in, they're trying to regulate it. <laughs> Is it? So the stance has changed. So now you have uh, uh, even Russia and you know, the same thing. They try to block it. Then after that, forget it. They will try to uh, experiment with their own uh, central bank digital currencies. India is the same thing. They try to block it. Then now oh, they're reversing it. They say, okay, let's regulate it. Even in Malaysia, back then we tried to block it and say that hey, crypto is not allowed. Then after that, a uh, few years back, we, we issued the license to three crypto exchanges. And so how these regulatory bodies are trying to regulate it is actually through the what we call the fiat link. So uh, when you're in crypto, you have your own world. They don't care about you, okay? But you have ringgit or US dollar or these fiat currencies, real, real currencies. The movement between fiat world into crypto world or uh, crypto world into fiat world, they want to hold you. So that's the edge, the market edge. Mm -hmm. That's where they, they want to regulate this part. Okay. But you got early adopters like El Salvador saying it's uh, perfectly legal tender, you know? Yeah, yeah, they they actually using it and and it's a, it's a good selling point for them now because for them, uh, they have nothing to lose. They have always been yeah, on I mean, the list. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're such a tiny economy and they're all in negative anyway, so nothing to lose, right? Nothing to lose. Yeah, nothing to lose. In fact, they might you know bring in innovation and investment into the country. Okay, all right. Uh, before we wind up our discussion, I just want to get your thoughts on NFTs. No, a lot mm -hmm. of people think it's just digital art. No, digital art is what NFT is all about. Uh, can we can we get your your comments your 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 perspective on that? NFT is uh, what is NFT is uh, is non fungible token. Uh, yeah. Non fungible um um token basically means that this particular like let's say you have a bitcoin one bitcoin I hold if I I then I have another bitcoin so this bitcoin and this bitcoin is actually the same you know you can swap it no difference it's like one dollar note and another one dollar note is the same you can swap it, the value is still there. 
it's, it's the same, okay? But what NFT is, is a non-fungible. That means you can't change it. Now, what is the use of this, okay? It's, it's, it's a new industry for uh, digital possession, all right? So now we have the 2017 uh, boom. That was the cryptocurrency, which is money 2.0. 20, uh, 2020, the current boom is DeFi boom, okay? The next boom is going to be an NFT boom. Okay, so you, you still have at least another. So what is NFT is um, ability to track and control digital possessions, okay? So what uh, NFT is doing is that it's shifting from physical ownership into a digital ownership. So it's not just art. Imagine book, you know, you, you write a book, you write a training material. Mm. But how, do you, how do you own the training material? How do you own this book? How do you own this ebook? Once you distribute out, you know, it's an ebook. Everybody can modify it, put the name there. How, how do you mm. actually say that this is my ebook? Okay. Um, so books, movies, you know, uh, you have art, you have songs, you have poetry, you have designs or whatever. Okay. So all these things that are digital uh, kind of uh, uh, ownership rights, it can be uh, put it into the NFT space and you can prove your ownership. You can actually buy and trade that ownership. So let's say I, I, I last time, you know, you write a story. And if people see the story, they can actually copy it. Who's the owner? You don't know. Who's the owner of these ideas? You don't know. But with uh, NF, uh, NFT, you can actually say that this idea, I documented it and I published it. This is my idea. If somebody else takes it, okay, they don't have ownership of this. It's, it's like a, a certificate of ownership. Right? Um, it's a digital so, uh, certificate in the blockchain, am I right? Come again? Yes, it's already recorded it's into digital, the blockchain. It's a digital certificate in the blockchain. Right, right. Mm. So uh, I, I can give you an example, okay? But before that, you know, uh, especially in game worlds, you know, uh, uh, I guess we are too old for, for games. But you know, some of the younger generations, they play game. They play this war game inside the game and they buy weapons. Yes. Okay? So when they buy weapons, uh, they need to own the weapon. And if uh, what if they want to... I fight, 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 I get a weapon and then I want to give it to my friend. I want to sell it to my friend as uh, with value. Now, he right. owns this. So with this NFT, he can transfer it to the other guy and the other guy pays him money. So it's a proof of uh, ability to transfer ownership within the, the, the um, digital space. <clears throat> now, let me let me give you another example. Yeah, um, It also helps people to do crossing between the digital space into reality. This is one of the other projects uh, that... Uh, the Golden Lab is, uh, is uh, pushing on uh, today is uh, the, the Durian Musang, Malaysian Musang King uh, sector. Um, if we look at in, in China or Hong Kong, you know, we buy it at a very high expensive price and um, everybody sells it Malaysia, uh, Musang King, Musang King, Musang King. Come from Thailand, Musang King. Come from Vietnam, Musang King. Come from Johor, Musang King. Everything also Musang King. How do they know actually is Musang King? You know, you, they, can't, they can't prove it. So what we're doing is that we are coming up with this uh, proposal for the government whereby we're using blockchain and NFT okay, to, uh, to digitize. So we, we have, uh, let's say in route, okay, uh, we have a center. The domestic one, we don't care, but for all exports, okay, we say that you come into the center, we will take picture, we will measure, we know where is the farm that is coming from, what day, timestamp, pop, pop, pop. Okay, we come up with an NFT, we tag it to the durian, and then it goes out to the distributor, to the exporter, and then they take timestamp, reach to the other side, the importer, pop, pop, pop. And when it reaches to the end user, they click, take a look at the QR code, they scan it, okay, you have the full, full trace from which farm, when it dropped, when it was collected, by whom, pom, 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 exported by what, uh, all the way reach there. Then people cannot say that, oh, my durian just arrived yesterday, only it's very fresh, it cost you 1000 but now from that, we can actually see from the NFT, which is a blockchain within the blockchain, you can actually track really, is it really fresh or not? Mm. They, say, they say that, is it coming from this farm ABC? Wow, my ABC farm are very good, very nice. But how do you actually prove it? So it's through this blockchain technology and also with NFT com uh, combination, uh, we are pursuing this so that we can actually control the quality of the Malaysian Musan King brand. Okay, so mm. when they go into China, they cannot say, oh, this one is from uh, Malaysian Musang King, but they cannot track it because if it comes from Thailand, but it has to be really, really from the Malaysian route center area. So we, this is how, as an example, real world example on how we use blockchain technology, uh, the blockchain technology and also NFT can be used uh, in a real world environment. Okay. That sounds very, very interesting, you know? 
Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, one last question before we open up for Q and A, Joseph. What would be maybe your top two or three pieces of advice for people who are thinking of getting into or investing in this whole cryptocurrency space? Um, I would say that the first thing here is that don't think too much. Just <laughs> <laughs> don't overanalyze. Don't want to be, oh, I must know this, I must know that, I must know this. Forget it. Because it's too fast, really. It's moving really, really too fast and it's too complicated. If you plan to learn everything, then you go in, you will never be able to go in because by the time you finish learning, new things has come out. Mm. Just start. You know, I, I, what I'm saying, don't think too much, just start. Okay, don't put in, you know, I'm not saying that. You can learn along the way. Yeah, just, just I always uh, tell people, you know, jump into the pool and start learning how to swim. You know, if you're trying to, uh, I always say uh, this thing, you know, I put you in the best swimmer coach in the world and you talk to the coach, teach you one whole month, uh, sit there on the table, teach you how to swim one whole month. After one whole month, you throw in a pool, you drown. <laughs> <laughs> right? So because... Uh, actually doing it swimming and actually and learning is totally different thing so you know uh, uh, you read too much you just over analyze it jump into the pool you get the feel of the water how it works okay that you, yeah. you learn a lot faster that way jump in jump in at the shallow end uh, not the 12 uh, yeah, yeah jump in the shallow end, the <laughs> deep end. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's one uh. then the other one is um, um, uh, one of the other biggest problem I see people is that they, they tend to panic sell okay ah. uh, when the price uh, this is a very strange phenomenon I don't understand why Whenever the price goes up, you know, people, uh, okay, uh, let me turn it around. A lot of people, when the uh, uh, price collapse, okay, then people, I will tell people, hey, it's time to buy, you know, the price is very good. You know, uh, cheap now, buy some. You know, I'm not saying buy a lot, buy some. Then people say, wow, the price is collapsing. Uh, oh, it's very scary. Uh, it becomes zero. Uh, then they won't buy. Then they stop. They will not buy at cheap price, you know. Then after that, the, the, the price reverse, boom, comes back up already. Now goes to 40,000. This, that's it today. Then they come, hey Joseph, um, forty thousand oh, is going up. Oh. Can buy now. Ah. Then I say, forty thousand. That time good price. You don't buy forty thousand now. You don't buy. <laughs> we got logic, okay? Then the other way around again. So, so they end up doing what? You know? they end up you know buying high, and then when it for the time collapse, the night I say, hey, now my fifty thousand ready. Ah. about time to sell. Ah. you want to sell, sell, ah. you know, sell, sell. They say, wow, the market is going up. Okay, not sell. I want to buy more. It's going up. Then the market collapse. Come back to twenty thousand. Then they say, oh, Joseph, oh, now the time to sell because it's collapsing. Eh, you buy high now, you want to sell low. I don't <laughs> understand the logic. <laughs> so um, I, I think it comes back to the general retail. Most of the time, why retail always fail when it comes to trading investment is that they have this reverse mindset, uh, which I, I, I failed to grasp over the years. Um, they just tend to you know, follow the, the Market. Um, what I believe in, in investment is something called, uh, seriously speaking, uh, um, um, uh, it's a reverse. I can't remember the word for it, but in generally, uh, whenever whatever the people say, when a lot if everybody is enthusiastic about something, I will sell. Uh, if somebody are you, are you referring to the contrarian? Uh, yes, contrarian. Yes, yes, contrarian concept. I'm a contrarian. So when everybody is selling, I will buy. If everybody is buying, I will sell. So I go along that line. But uh, most of the time, you know, people, I'm not sure why, they always go the other way around. They will buy high, sell low, then all, all the other way around. I, I, don't, I don't get that. So that's the second thing. So my, my point here is that, you know, uh, hold, you know, hold on to it. But when it collapses, don't panic, just hold on to it. And uh, the third one is actually to, to focus on the quantity and not the value because you're looking at something that's very long term. So today you buy in 100 bucks, let's just say. Tomorrow it drops to 80 bucks, 70 bucks, 60 bucks. Okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to sell it? Because you know your horizon is five years. In between, whether it goes to 20 bucks or go to 500 bucks or go to 1,000, wow, you know, you think, oh, 5,000 already, I want to sell. But you have a horizon of five years. Why are you so fast going to sell? Maybe so you just hold it and wait until five years. Your value goes too fast, uh, a lot higher than, than where it is today. So I, I believe that this uh, industry will only go up uh, because it's growing eventually and regulation will come in uh, for sure but uh, regulation is actually a good thing but they will only regulate on the edge the edge where you have fiat money and you have crypto space they, it's very difficult for them to regulate the crypto space okay so those are the three three points that focus on the quantity the third one and not the value of it mm, okay great 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 advice 
And uh, <laughs> the number two advice I tell you is so true, and I, I know so many people, myself included, at times, no. Uh, it's, it's, it's true. Follow like, mob, you just follow the herd, and then yeah, even you, know, for, you panic. For you panic you're so emotional about it rather than staying cool and calm, huh? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people, what they do is also like this, you know. Uh, they put in a little bit, then they make money. Wow, got make money, then they put in more. Oh, makes more money. Then they put in a little bit more. Boom, it makes more, more money. Then finally they go silent. Then the whole market collapse. <laughs> <laughs> then they, 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 when they, they, when they make, they make the little bit. But when they lose, they lose a lot. Part. Mm. You know. Uh, so that is the biggest problem with I see a lot of traders are doing that. You know? So mm. I always practice uh be consistent. You know, when you want to get into something, put it into three strands. Leave it there. Uh, uh, don't chase it. You know, when when it mm. goes to the top, you know, just leave it. Is it if it collapse? Also, don't until you know there's a certain levels to it. Like, mm. don't. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't panic. Okay. Yeah, don't panic. Yeah. Like, yeah. So and then, no, Joseph. Thank you so much for your sharing. Very generous and very insightful. And yeah, thanks uh, for having me. Yeah. Yeah, it's just been great. Okay. Thank